Walking away is not easy, but it can and must be done. The process that I see it has four steps. Number one, you need to get rid of toxic thoughts. Whether they think that you can or whether they think that you can't, you are right. Henry Ford Negative thoughts of lack, scarcity, or fear are the start of all of our problems that we have. It is not your fault, as the society that we have produces this on an industrial scale purposefully. This is where 90% of the battle is, and how the elite use your thoughts to self-regulate your behavior. I produced the Sons of Liberty Academy to show the behind-the-scenes process of controlling humanity, and like a magician revealing a trick, once you see it, you will never be fooled again. Every negative thought, like, I'm poor or have nothing, can have the opposite positive thought that is still true, like, I have nothing to lose or nothing to hold me back. Getting control of your mind is the most important step in really changing your world. By being grateful for what you have and not focusing on the narcissistic, consumer-driven scarcity mentality of lack, you will channel your energies into people, skills, and things that empower you as a person and stop channeling your energy into wage slave jobs only to spend whatever gains you sacrifice for into consumer debt driven binges. Once you purge yourself of toxic thoughts, you will naturally notice that there are a lot of people that are in your life that are spewing toxicity into your life all the time. For the most part, they're completely unaware of the toxic ideas that they spill, as misery loves company. But you will start to notice a few psychopaths that actually use these toxic thoughts to control you and others out of fear. You will need to cut all of these toxic influences out of your life, as if your life depends on it. If this means that you have to lose best friends, leave your family like I did, or leave your boss, this must be done. You can start slowly and transition these changes over time, but when you're awake, it allows you to be an observer of the process as opposed to emotionally involved. This gives you great power, as the number one tool toxic people use is irrational fear. The benefit of doing these first two steps is that once you gain a sense of peace through logic, you will feel happier and more in control of your life. You will not only cut out the toxic bullies, you will weaken them by no longer serving their wild demands. There is another huge benefit to this, by being a better person, you will attract others of the same mindset. You will be able to feel the power of the abundance mentality, where you can give all your energy away to grateful people who deserve it and they, in return, will give you far more than you would ever received through the old mindset of lack and scarcity. This is where opportunities to work with good people or do great things start to happen. Even if you only do these first two steps, which are totally achievable in any situation, you have already won 95% of the battle in life. You can have or do very little of anything in your life if you do these two things and have a truly blessed life, helping and loving those that you care for, and not empowering those that would seek to abuse you. But people want to learn how to get out of their toxic job and still be able to support their family. As I have said before, there are only two happinesses that you'll find in your life. Number one is the day that you get rid of the scarcity mentality, that you can provide for yourself and your family without fear. The only other happiness that you'll ever find in your life is helping others to achieve the same level of abundance. The third step on this path is perhaps the simplest, get rid of toxic assets. All paper assets have counterparty risk and their value depends on this debt-based paradigm. Stocks, bonds, pensions, insurance, and even cash in your hand are only worth something so long as this economic paradigm exists. When you logically see the forces of exponential growth of debt, declining demographics, depleting energy resources, systemic corruption, and wealth disparity, it does not take a brain surgeon to see that things that cannot go on forever won't. We are in the winter of this debt and death cycle. It will end in war and economic crisis. And every time we go through this crisis, assets with no counterparty risk that have real tangible value become very sought after by humanity. Food and fuel will be the things that humanity cannot live without and will sacrifice the most for. I recommend that you get a buffer for the day that the dollar dies and our just-in-time manufacturing and logistics system seizes up. Think of your digital wealth as merely a future claim on real goods and not real wealth itself. Actually, our money is anti-wealth, since it only becomes valuable when you spend it on real things. Then you start to think about how much money they can create out of thin air to buy those real assets, and you start to see the insanity of thinking that digits on the computer screen are real wealth. 
Most food and fuel have storage and degradation issues, which is why people go to precious metals. I chose silver over gold simply because the gold to silver mining ratio that comes out of the ground is one ounce of gold for every nine ounces of silver. And yet to buy gold or silver, the ratio is one ounce of gold to 50 ounces of silver. It is my belief that regardless what the dollar value of gold does, silver will outperform gold five to one. And I believe a strong case can be made that since silver has been used and abused as a cheap disposable industrial metal, that we will go far beyond the one to nine gold to silver ratio. This is not a battle of politics, finances, or military strength. It is a battle of human consciousness. This is about what we do, actively or passively supporting with the energy in our lives. Like I said before, if you just do the first two steps, you will already have won 95% of the battle. By doing the third step of getting rid of toxic assets, you start deleveraging the power that the elite use to control us, the dollar. People's loyalty are bought with dollars. The whole thesis behind the silver bullet and the silver shield is that we can empower ourselves with real wealth and collapse their paper Ponzi confidence game. I believe that when you get rid of toxic assets, it will give you the capital and confidence to prepare for the day the dollar dies and your job ceases to exist, or at least provide a buffer for you to take that final step. The final step is to get rid of your toxic path in life. Everybody always starts this with wanting to know how to get rid of their job and skip all the rest. It cannot be done in my opinion, and it would be reckless to try any other way. We cannot change the outside world to be happy or free. We must change ourselves to make the world happy and free. By walking away from your toxic job, you unshackle the final chain that you put on yourself. We were indoctrinated to sacrifice what is good about us to some uncaring collective. We are told to obey authority and not listen to that small voice of your consciousness. We all have special talents and passions that the collective drive out. I suggest that after you do the first three steps that you start a hobby or a skill, that you would work all hours and realize that you did not eat all day because you love doing it. Hopefully this has real tangible value that will become far more important after a dollar collapse and that you can do it on the side of your current career. You will find that simply because you are interested and talented that people will want to reward you and encourage you to continue with this path. This way that you can build a business that one day you can either leave your job or at least have a skill that when the dollar collapses you will have the means of supporting yourself when the fiat world collapses.